How's it going everybody? Texas Man here. Hope you're having a wonderful day and a Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays to all of you guys and I hope you guys are all having a spectacular day. If you guys would please give this video a thumbs up if you guys do really enjoy it. Subscribe of course if you guys have not already. Also do me the biggest favor of all. Make sure you guys hit that bell notification button. Select all for all notifications so you guys don't miss out on future videos or streams here on the channel. I cover movies, TV shows, tabletop games, video games, and a bunch of other awesome fun things here on the channel. And as always, we're going to be talking positives and negatives, talking about The Nutcracker and The Four Realms. This film came out in 2018. It is rated PG. It's about an hour and 40 minutes long. And it is a Disney movie, so obviously you can watch it on Disney+. Plus If you do have that subscription service, you guys can also get it on DVD, Blu-ray, 4K, depending on your origin availability, and of course on digital stores. And when this film came out, I was semi-hopeful. I was kind of excited, you know, we don't get a lot of we don't get a lot of Christmas movies from Disney, and so when this film was announced, I was like, "Oh, really cool! You know, a little Christmas movie, something that should be fun." I mean, it's rated PG, so it's not going to be you know, blood, gore, and guts. It's not going to be something you know, super violent. It'd just be a fun little movie to watch for about an hour and a half, and it's decent, and. There are some really decent performances. Um, there are some actors and actresses that I think give some overtop performances in their roles. <laughs> and they're just trying to have fun with a very boring script. And that is the biggest downfall I want to talk about when it comes to this movie is that it's boring. There is nothing in this film that excites you. You don't really get invested with any of the characters. You never get invested really with the main character of Clara. It tries to pull some emotional heartstrings towards the beginning of the movie and, of course, towards the end, but I think this film suffers for the fact that it's too short. Everything feels extremely rushed throughout the entire movie. Everything is just going at a breakneck, break, at breakneck speed. Everything's just go, 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 go. There's also certain scenes where it's like a certain, like, development happens or a certain, you know, dialogue scene ends and then it feels like it goes to, like, a little black screen for, like, a split second and then it goes to the next scene. And it feels like either the editing editing department was really bad at their job for this movie or there were certain scenes that were cut out. I think if this movie was about an hour and a half longer, if it was a solid two hours and, like, 15 minutes long, I think it would have benefited um, I mean, this film's called The Nutcracker and the Four Realms. I don't care about the Nutcracker. I don't care about the main character of Clara being a princess. And I really didn't care about the stakes at hand. I didn't care about the shocking revelation. Shocking, if you want to call it that. I, I saw it coming a mile away um, of who the actual villain is of the story. You don't really get to explore and engage and be a part of the world i mean there's four realms we spend the movie in a castle in a godfather's mansion and then we spend time in one of the four realms they do this little side strolling carousel thingy where we explore the land of flowers snowflakes and sugar plum fairies candy thing Wait, we didn't even go to Sugar Plum. What? No, I think we did. Anyway, we spend most of our time between in in this other reality world. We spend most of our time in the amusement land thing, and then in the castle. Why is it called the Four Realms if we don't actually get to engage with these actual total Four Realms? We don't get to explore their culture. We don't get to engage with little characters um they have these emissaries from all of the realms two of them are just side characters that just say exposition stuff and be like oh we're so happy you're alive oh we're so happy you're okay please don't go over there please don't do this it, they're, they're irritating why are they there you could have had a robot there instead of some sort of funky person <laughs> i just just waste of character there's so much wasted potential when it came to this film so much wasted potential it wastes time on just telling a very generic story the plot is very basic and it just borrows too much from other films that i'm sure not only have i seen but you have seen as well if you've seen any sort of christmas movie or just any movie in general there is some sort of plot element that this film borrows from this film is basically a conglomeration of 
elements from The Santa Claus 3 and The Chronicles of Narnia. Literally, the plot is a teenage girl who is somehow magically royalty has to stop an evil magical character that is in disguise as a good person at the beginning of the film. And the reason you know that when the revelation, the shocking revelation occurs that they're actually evil is not shocking is because they're just way too nice. They're just so cheerful. We're so happy you're here. Yay, please save us. Okay, there gets a point where it's like, okay, we get it. She's super nice because she really wants the good character that's just showed up to help the bad guys. And it's just like, you're evil. You're evil. I literally called it out when I was watching this film back in 2018. I called it out again when I was watching it for this review five years later. <laughs> it's been five years since I've seen it. I'm just like, and I didn't remember it. I'm just like, okay, this seems way too weird that she's just so nice. She's just so nice and so plaza, Sugar Plum Fairy is. Um, and so, you know, Clara has to stop this evil magical character, Sugar Plum Fairy, before she can unleash this army of tin can soldiers. And take control of everything and everyone. Sound like Santa Claus 3 with Jack Frost? Um, how it relates to Narnia is the entire kingdom is basically covered in snow. You have a bunch of side characters. Most of them mean absolutely nothing and do nothing. And you could literally erase them from the entire film. And the film would still be fine. Also, the movie does this thing where the character comes through some sort of portal doorway that apparently anyone can just magically walk into and get into this other reality, this other world. Also, the rules and explanations as to how you can get in and how you can leave this other world is never explained. Literally, this film has no logic. It has no rules established as to how anyone can get into this world and how they can leave the world. At least with Narnia, there was a set understanding that in order to get into Narnia, you had to not be trying to get into Narnia. And if you wanted to leave Narnia, there was only certain ways to get out. There was only certain doorways. There was only certain like items that allowed you to leave Narnia. Otherwise, you were stuck in Narnia. This film has none of that understanding. Literally, the main character of Clara is in her godfather's mansion. She follows a little rope because of a Christmas game. She follows this little rope that goes into this hallway. It leads to a door, just a regular door. She opens the door. She continues down the hallway. And before you know it, the hallway is actually a tree trunk and it just leads right into this magical realm. So because of this logic that is established in this movie, which makes you no know, freaking sense whatsoever, you're telling me that this godfather human character just has a doorway to another magical realm just chilling in his place. Which means anyone, and I do mean literally anybody, could open that door, walk through the hallway, and get into this other world. Why is it that nobody besides Clara and her mom are the only two people that we know of have actually gone to this other realm? <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me no one else has opened this door and made a trip to the other side, into this other reality, to this other world. Sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. Just, just only two people have decided to open this door and see what's behind and see what's on the other side. I'm sorry, that just that that is complete utter nonsense. Um back to f talking about the the movie. Um there are some cool moments of characters, like I said towards the beginning and in the end, dealing with the loss of a family member. But otherwise this film is extremely boring. Like I said, it's extremely predictable. You can see things coming a mile away. The ending was extremely unsatisfying. Guys, if you want to watch a Christmas movie, I don't recommend watching this. Um, I mean, obviously it's on Disney Plus and you can get it on DVD and Blu-ray. But it's going to be something that I think is worth watching once. Just to say you saw it you saw it, and you can talk to people about it. But it's forgettable. It's extremely forgettable. It's not a die-hard, must-see Christmas movie for the holidays. 
Now, I know there are a lot of people that are like, oh, but it was so faithful to the, you know, telling of the Nutcracker story. If it is, because I honestly don't know, I'm happy for that. But for me personally, I found this movie boring. Um, if it's close to the source material, the source material is utterly boring. And they should have done something to try to make it a little more entertaining. The action sequences are just boring, too. If there's nothing exciting. I almost fell asleep watching this movie. Um, I, I just... It's just generic and uninteresting. So, with that, guys, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree. Have a great day. Look forward to more videos and streams out soon. Bye, guys.